I wanted to kind of look into the production and distribution of The Hunger Games. Now I thought this is a really interesting film that I'm quite passionate about. So I thought that I'd really love to look into detail a bit more. So it's directed by Gary Ross. This is the 2012 film. Uh, produced by Nina Jacobson. And it's based on the book trilogy by Suzanne Collins. A co it's a co-production from Lionsgate and Colour Force, but it's distributed by Lionsgate. So when the film was released, it set records on the opening day. And the opening day got $67.3 million, with the opening weekend $152.5 million. It was the first film since Avatar to just completely smash the records. And the movie was a complete success, earning $685 million worldwide. So on February 22nd, 2012, The Hunger Games broke the record for the first day advanced ticket sales on Fandango, topping the previous record of Twilight Eclipse. The sales were reported to be 83% of the site's totals for the day. The film sold out in over 4,300 showings across the United States. The Hunger Games is what studios call a tentpole release. The term refers to a film that the studio expects to prop up the studio for that year. In other words, they think it's going to make a lot of money for Lionsgate. So for Lionsgate, it was The Hunger Games and for Summit Entertainment, Twilight. With The Hunger Games, there was already a ready-made fan base. So fans of the book will be really, really interested and already want to know more about the films. So more than 24 million copies of The Hunger Games trilogy, trilogy were sold in the United States alone. About 4.9 million copies were in circulation when the movie's marketing campaign intensified in the summer of 2012. However, there was quite a bit of controversy because along the way the studio had to navigate some unusually large pitfalls. Chief among them was the film's tricky subject matter of children killing each other for fun. Now, the trilogy of the novels written by Suzanne Collins is critical of violence as entertainment. It's not an easy line for a movie marketer to walk. Even though the movie itself is quite tame, it's a depiction of, in its depiction of killing. Yes. So to avoid criticism of the film featuring kids killing kids, the trailer didn't show the games at all. However, it focused on the build up to them. This created an enigma code, which encouraged the audience to see the film out of curiosity. The Lionsgate team, including producer Nina Jacobson and producer Joe Drake, um, started debating how to handle the movie's subjects. And the, un the usual move would have been to exploit imag imagery from the games in TV commercials. But Mr. Palin was worried. The book is on junior high's reading list. But Kids Killing Kids, even though it's handled delicately in the film, is a potential perception problem in marketing, he said. One morning, he floated a radical idea. What about never showing the games at all in the campaign? Some team members were slightly dubious about this idea, but some supported the idea because there was a lot of, you've got to be kidding, I don't see how we can manage that. But eventually he prevailed because everyone liked the implication that if you don't see the games, you kind of have to buy a ticket. So, 24 children fighting to the death until one wins is kind of something that you don't see every day. And Mr. Palin said, This is not about glorifying competition. These kids are victims. Let the games begin as the headline for the Hunger Games cover. The market, now onto the marketing budget. Lionsgate has generated this high level of interest with a marketing staff of 21 people working with a relatively tiny budget of about $45 million. 
bigger studios routinely spend a hundred million dollars on marketing major releases and have worldwide marketing and publicity staffs of over a hundred people. The studio has been able to spend so little, largely because Mr. Palin has relied on his in inexpensive digital initiatives to whip up excitement. So early in the promotion for the Hunger Games, it started in around 2009, when Mr. Palin, this is Tim Palin, he flew to New York to meet with the publicity executives from Scholastic to learn about the book franchise. Now, while studios, while some studios have halted once standard marketing steps like newspaper ads, Lionsgate used all the unusual old media tricks, giving away 80,000 posters, securing almost 50 magazine cover stories, advertising on 3,000 billion billboards and bus shelters. It also had an online marketing campaign. However, the campaign's centerpiece has been phased. It had a, non a near consistent use of Facebook and Twitter, a YouTube channel, a Tumblr blog, iPhone games and live Yahoo streaming for the premiere, which has been consistent throughout all the films and has worked incredibly. The campaign really sprung into action in May 2011 when Lionsgate started teaming up methodically, releasing information about the casting of the film via Twitter and Facebook. Twitter became an integral part of the marketing campaign for The Hunger Games. Fans anticipating the film could actively engage with Lionsgate via social network. It was an easy way for fans to be consistently updated on the progress of the film and thus build momentum for the release of the film. In July 2011, the first official poster was released via Facebook. Later the same month, the first look of photographs of the cast on set were released on Twitter. Early in August, the official release date for the second film, Catching Fire, was released. And in July 2011, at Comic-Con, they had a big stand in San Diego and gave out copies of the new poster to fans. The trailer came out in August 2011 and it was a one minute sneak peek introduced online at MTV.com. People liked it but complained loudly that it wasn't enough. We weren't prepared for that level of we demand more pushback, said Mr. Palin. People want, fans of the book wanted to see more and argued against Palin's idea of not showing the games in the trailer. The footage did include a Twitter prompt through, through which fans could discover a website for the movie thecapital.pn and this has been used to advertise all four of the films and engage with fans and including competitions and live stream videos. The Capital is where The Hunger Games takes place and this site allows visitors to make digital ID cards as if they live in Panem, the movie's futuristic society. More than 800,000 people have created these accounts including myself. In October Twi they made another Twitter stunt. This time it made it meant that fans could allow those ID markers to campaign online to be elected mayor of various districts in Panem. Now in November 2011 it marked the iTunes release of the main trailer which received 8 million views in 24 hours. Again Twitter was used to build up the hype prior to the release. And in January 2012, posters were released that featured the main characters of the film. On December 15th, 100 days before the movie's release, the studio created a new poster and cut it into 100 puzzle pieces. It then gave digital versions of those pieces to 100 websites and asked them to post their puzzle piece on Twitter in lockstep. Fans had to search through Twitter to put together the poster either by printing out the pieces and cutting them out or using a program like Photoshop. The Hunger Games trended worldwide on Twitter within minutes. It was a silly stunt, but it worked. Mr. Palin, again, some of his most creative ideas end up being the most successful. A lavish Tumblr blog called Capital Couture, dedicated to the movie's unique fashions, was also there to market the film. 
Synergy was used as The Hunger Games Adventures was released on the same day as the film and took the form of a social networking platform. This is an app where fans can run through Panem like Katniss. Capital TV arrived in February 2012. It's a YouTube channel designed to look like the official networking of Panem. It combines sneak previews of film footage and user-generated Hunger Games videos. Mr. Palim said, you've got to constantly give people something new to get excited about. But we also had another goal in mind. Synergy. S Lionsgate described the Synergy as very successful. Because throughout the month of September, any fan that read the Hunger Games in the Scribid social reader application was entered in a read a chapter, win a library competition for a chance to win a classroom library full of books for one of the public schools in their area. They also released Barbie dolls of the Hunger Games characters. The replica of Katniss doll ha had the very essence of all the characters' power due to the stance, the clothes and even her hairstyle. Lionsgate revealed a new trailer for the film at the American Super Bowl in February 2012. The Super Bowl is the annual championship game of the National Football League and is a huge event in America's calendar.